Joining us now is the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, California Congressman Adam Schiff. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for making time to be here tonight. I know it's a busy time. Thank you, Rachel. As a rule, I generally don't cover statements by the president unless they are somehow linked to actions by the president, because he says a lot of things that come to naught and that I think are designed uh, to get a rise out of people and to turn the uh, turn the news cycle to his advantage. It strikes me that these remarks tonight that the election is fraudulent and that there will not be a transfer of power. It strikes me tonight that those are something different, that this sort of crosses the line um, into words as action, that this is essentially uh, the president in, in new territory in terms of his threat to the democracy. Rachel, you are absolutely right uh, to focus tonight on his words as well as his deeds. Uh, they do cross a very bright line. Uh, and over the course of this presidency, um, some of his supporters have been able to write <laughs> off his remarks as well. That's just trumping Trump or clearly he was joking, there is no question that he means exactly what he said. Uh, and people fail to take that seriously at our national peril. Uh, this is a moment that I would say to any Republican of good conscience working in the administration, it is time for you to resign. It is time for you to resign. If you have been debating about whether you can continue to serve the country by serving this president, you can't. It is time to resign. And I would say to those who have been on the sidelines, maintaining a dignified silence, who have served in the administration in the past, you cannot maintain your silence any longer. You have to maintain dignified speech now. You have to speak out. Do not wait until after the election. Do not wait until we have the chaos the president wants after the election, when he seeks to, as he said, get rid of the ballots. Because if you do wait, knowing what is to come, you will share some of the burden of responsibility for that chaos that comes. So this is a time for all good people of conscience to speak uh, and to act uh, to preserve our democracy, because there is no longer any question about this president's intentions. Uh, his autocratic intentions are as clear as the writing on the wall. So I am glad you're spending time focused on this because I think uh, no one will be able to say uh, they did not see this coming when he has so clearly telegraphed his intent now. It seems to me, Mr. Chairman, that um, we have sort of what what this does is that we ha we no longer have suspense. I think that a lot of the anticipation and worrying and sort of gaming out potential scenarios in terms of uh, how far he might go had a timeline in mind where it was, you know, we'd all be sort of waiting to see what happened on November 3rd. It seems to me that the president and his campaign and his supporters in the White House and elsewhere in the administration and in Congress have crossed into territory now where, it, as far as they're concerned, it doesn't matter what happens on November 3rd, that the tallying of the ballots is declared in advance to be inauthentic, to be something that is a sucker's game, that is part of this hoax, that the entire election is a hoax. Uh, he's essentially running against the election rather than running for re-election. Um, how should the Biden campaign or um, people who aren't supportive, who want to try to outflank the president and his supporters in this maneuver, adjust accordingly, given that I think their focus no longer is on whatever the vote tally starts to look like election night when the votes start getting counted? Well, you know, I think the Biden campaign and certainly uh, those of us in Congress are making every effort to to push back, to prepare for these contingencies, to be ready to engage, to save our democracy uh, if and when the president seeks to uh, throw out the ballots, get rid of the ballots, uh, as he was saying. Uh, and if Republican operatives around the country start to try to seat electors, notwithstanding the popular vote in those states. So we are doing everything we can. But those who are watching us now, they have a bigger responsibility, frankly, because it's in all of our hands to make sure that this scenario does not play out, that the result is not close, that indeed it is a landslide repudiation of Donald Trump. That is really the only outcome that, that gives us a clear path forward. 
Uh, the other alternatives, a closely contested election, or God forbid, one in which the president should retain the Electoral College, lead to disaster for the country and for our democracy. So, you know, our mission has to be clear, which is to make this result so overwhelming uh, that it cannot be contested uh, and that the president's efforts to throw out the ballots uh, fall on deaf ears. Um, because I think one thing that the Atlantic article gets quite right, and that is there's just no clear playbook uh, for this situation. We've never had a president in advance say that he is unwilling to accept the, the vote of millions uh, and will not transfer office peacefully. Uh, so we have to take matters into our hands by registering everyone, turning them out. The good news is we have the capacity to do it because we have the numbers to do it. Um, the, the reason why the president is so fixated and Mitch McConnell is so fixated on disenfranchising people and throwing out ballots is they know they represent a declining minority of Americans, a shrinking minority. And even if they do everything right, they can still lose if we do our jobs right. Uh, so that's what we have to do. But, but it, it, you know, this is, as I mentioned, a time for people of conscience in both parties. Um, these are the statements of a would-be dictator. There's just no ignoring them anymore. There's no wishing them away. There's no pretending that he doesn't mean what he says. There's too much evidence to the contrary. And so uh, we know what we have to do in terms of turning our people out. But Republicans of good conscience now know what they need to do, which is they need to stand up and be counted. Adam Schiff is the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Sir, uh, when we asked you to be on the show tonight, I had a list of about 400 things to ask you about. I still have 399 of those left, despite what the president's remarks were tonight and, uh, and your reaction to them. But I hope you'll come back soon. There's a lot going on, sir. Thank you.